What's up? Sharif Ali, author, creator, administrator of the www.moresinamerica.com. Um, I just wanted to hit on this and make a video to go along with the post that I'm making about Moors in America, who we are, why we're here, why we're Moors, and it clear up some of the confusion. They don't want you to know this information. I hate saying they, because it sounds like it's some big scary boogeyman who doesn't exist, but it's for real. These aren't, you know, I mean, there are people who, who are rich and who control um, the wealth in this country and who try to um, keep people in their place and also who want to keep secrets in place. Then you also just have regular people who are benefiting from you being ignorant to who you are. You have people who own casinos, who are giving government money, giving land, giving tax-free benefits, and they benefit from you not knowing this stuff, you know? Millions of people who were Indians were just reclassified as Negroes. It's written in law. You can look this stuff up. Virginia law, and when something happens in one state, it gets adopted to all the states, right? So you have tons of people who look like us and darker who were just reclassified as Negro, colored, black, African-American, whatever we're going to be in 20 years. You know, they decide to change the name to get somebody like Jesse Jackson to come to and be like, yeah, we Afro-Americans. And everybody's Afro-American. Before that, you were Negro. So they just reclassified all these people who were Indians as Negroes, and there's people who are now sitting in these places, sitting on reservations, people who aren't in reservations but claiming the status, and they don't want you to know. That's the day when I say they. It's not some boogeyman, it's, you know? And one reason why is because even they know how foolish they look claiming to be Native Americans. You know, the, the descriptions of the actual Native Americans by the Europeans when they came over here were people who were copper toned skin color people, you know? And I'm a light-skinned dude, and I'm way closer to the copper tone than 90% of these Native Americans. And I'm talking about even the ones who are of the mongoloid stock, you know, the ones who are kind of Asian, you know? And then you got the ones who are just straight up European. They know they don't look like that. If I put on the regalia, I put on my indigenous um, attire, I look like a Native American, but they don't. So. They don't want you to rock it if you rock it better than them, you know, because then it's obvious that somebody's a lie and somebody is real. So more back to the post and what I'm going to speak on. Um, basically, the other day, I saw some comments on a post about this, this Native American chick who looks like she's Mexican or something. Not hating on that, not even saying the Mexicans aren't the original Native Americans, just saying she's like lighter skin. And she's um, hating because she saw a picture of a dark-skinned, quote-unquote, black woman. I'm going to use more from now on in the video. So when I say more, if you call yourself African-American or whatever to call yourself, we're talking about you. So it was a Moorish lady, and she's darker than me. And she's, like, dressed like Pocahontas. And the uh, lady was hating on her big time. I mean, this lady just put up a picture of her doing that. For all you know, she's rocking her show she is. And this lady was just going on and on, hating on her. And she caught a lot of flack, man. A lot of people were going on her Twitter post, you know, saying like, witty indigenous Americans with a copper skin tone. She looks like a real Native American. You don't. And I guess she talked from my page. She made a Twitter profile private. And so people were sharing it on Facebook and going on and on about it. And one of the comments on there brought up something that I want to hit on because there's a lot of confusion, okay? My website is called Moors in America. And it's talking about a lot of things. You have people who came here from Europe, from, from North Africa, from Portugal, Spain, who were Moors, from Moorish Spain, from Granada, from Al Andalus, people who actually came over here who were Moors. You have people who came over here and mixed with the Native Americans. You have the Nantitok Moors, you know, like in, in um, Northeastern United States, who are actually called Moors <laughs> by, by the Europeans. There's even laws and treaties written into place referring to these Indians as Moors, okay? So you actually have that that took place, and then you have the indigenous people here who are called Moors. It's called Moors. You know, they, they were, when I'm talking about the Native Americans, I'm talking about Moors. That's what the site hits on a lot. And so there's a lot of confusion about that. You have people that don't know, they're not aware of the things that I'm aware of, who would try to dumb it down or say, 
the Moors were, you know, slave enslaving Africans. You know, they are enemies. They're working with the white man. There's people that are saying this stuff and regurgitating this garbage and just saying it over and over again. They're coming at it from a very low level point of view. And I'm going to I'm going to prove that to you. OK, because that type of stuff is like it's so ignorant. It's so below beneath what I'm hitting on that it's not even worth um, it's not even worth entertaining that shit. people that are talking like that are like just causing more division within what we have right now. Okay, so this guy had commented and he had just said that like, you know, only like seven to twelve percent of black Americans are descendants of the North American Moors. And he's referring to people who came over here during the slave trade from North Africa, maybe from Europe. And so there are two people going back and forth about that. And they're both basically in agreement that the Moors here are of the stock from Europe and North Africa, all right? I had to hit on that because I've been studying for years and I've gone through so many schools of thought that I have a well-rounded view on these things. I know about the people being enslaved by the Moors. I know all of that. And to me, it's kind of dumbed down because I also know something else that most people don't know. Something that, you know, I need to hit on so that a greater audience can come to this knowledge too. All right. Excuse me while I look at this to refresh my memory. But um, when I had responded to the post, I basically was just saying, you guys are mistaken. Um, you're on point when you're referring to the Moors in America, the Moorish Indians, because he was referring to the Nan Nanitoke Indians or the Nanitoke Moors. But educated Europeans, okay, in the past, referred to all Native Americans as Moors, Indians, and Negroes interchangeably, okay? Educated Europeans, not just some regular folk who came over here, they let them out to prison and like, get over there, go to America. People who were like governors, people who were running, people who were over things like the companies, you know, like states started out as companies. They were over the Virginia company, Pennsylvania company. These types of people were referring to the natives as Indians, as Negroes, as Moors. You just threw them words around because they were all the same to them. Okay, so they use this stuff just interchangeably and they weren't stupid for doing this. These are educated people, you know, they weren't allowed to come to the Americas, North, South, Central America until the Moorish Empire fell in 1492. That's why it's no coincidence that Columbus just happened to come over here in 1492. He was able to set sail to this land. Why? He wasn't looking for a route to Asia. That's what they taught us. It's like a fairy tale, though. The Christian Europeans inherited the knowledge and wisdom of the Moors when the last stronghold of the Moorish kingdom, which was in Grenada, Spain at the time, fell. Okay, and then people I know who are dumb, they go, you see the Moors working with the enemy, and that's why they slay. And see, that's stupid, you know, but I'm going to show you why that's stupid. So, basically, William Penn, okay, is the founder of Pennsylvania, the state of Pennsylvania. Once again, not just some regular stupid oak. He called the Indians Moors. Okay, and he's on, he's on record saying this, like in his personal biography, his personal um, diary. And in, in a, this is a quote, and in 1681, the Indians of New England, the Indians of New England, or Moors, as they were also styled by the settlers, were pronounced by William Penn to be as black as gypsies. Now, this is coming actually from um, the author uh, David McRitchie's book, Ancient and Modern Britons. This was a quote from William Penn's biography. Once again, he wasn't nobody. He was the founder of Pennsylvania, which I believe was founded for Quakers or whatever. So he's referring to the Lenape, Lenny Lenape Indians of Pennsylvania. And he's saying the Indians of New England or Moors as they were styled by the settlers, okay? That he, he called them black as gypsies, all right? And then also in 1676, the native races of New England were spoken of indifferently as Indians and Moors. And our British Indians are also remembered as Moors, okay? So, um, I mean, they, of course, they're gonna call their, their people Moors because you're coming from Europe and you're dealing with the Moors, okay? And I'm gonna hit on why they call the people here Moors. They weren't stupid for saying that. So, yeah, the amount of slaves that came over here, 
through the transatlantic slave trade is, is greatly exaggerated. They didn't have the power then to bring 20 million, 10 million. I mean, you could even have the numbers and they would still be ridiculous. They couldn't bring that many people over here. Even over 100 years, 200 years, they couldn't do it, okay? They can't even do that now. It would be difficult for them to get that many people to immigrate, all right? And especially with the amount of people they were saying were dying on the ships. I mean, it was ridiculous. The real deal was the internal slave trade, okay? Where you're capturing people from Mississippi, sending them up the river, or even sending them to Barbados, sending them to Jamaica, sending them to different countries within the Americas or different states within the Americas. This was shown in the movie 12 Years a Slave. It hinted it on it because this was actually a narrative from a real person who was a free colored man, he was a Moor, who got captured and sold into slavery. Okay, this was his biography. His name was Solomon Northup. Um, I don't know if he was real, but according to history and what we were taught, it's accepted that he was a real person who wrote this at a time of what he went through, sold the book, made a little money, did his thing, and he was actually captured. He had a family and everything. He was educated. He could play the violin. I could play the violin. You, you couldn't just play the violin back then. You had to have some kind of money and education to come up and learn stuff like that. So he was a free Moor walking around while other Moors were enslaved. And he got tripped and captured and sold down south, like to Louisiana or something like that. Okay? And he saw other people. They actually showed in the movie some woman getting her kids taken away from her and sold off. So this shit was happening. And they're telling the people, the kids, they came from Africa. You couldn't tell that to the elders. You could tell that to the children. So this shit was getting cut up and switched off like that, all right? And this is shown in the movie inadvertently. They're not trying to tell you who you are, but it's in there, okay? So um, the real deal was the internal slave trade, which was taking place right here, getting people who was free, who lived here, who were Indians, okay? And the term more had nothing to do with the religion Islam. See, that's where y'all getting confused. Europeans had just gotten through dealing with the Moors in, in order to take over Europe. The fight for power took place over a long time. The Moors ruled damn near 800 years, okay, from 711 to 1492. And um, when they finally fell, okay, yeah, everybody that looked like this is a Moor to me. But it wasn't that simple. There's more to it, okay? So anytime they encounter people that look like us, yeah, they would be encountering Moors from their perspective. But once again, that was deeper than that. They didn't even know about the world. They didn't know about uh, the earth spinning on its axis and going through space. And, you know, some of y'all are dumb and you think the world's flat. But they didn't know about all this stuff. They didn't know about Sirius and other stars. They didn't know these things. The Moors did. They inherited the knowledge from them. Even some of the knowledge was too much for them at the time. They inherited this from the people who were running civilization at the time. Okay? They weren't allowed to go that many places at, before they, um, of course, uh, Granada fell. You know, because the entire planet was ruled by us. So there was only some places they could go and trade and go and leave Europe. But for the most part, they had to stay where they were at. Okay? And so, like, once again, I'm just trying to make this make sense for the people who are enlightened and who are open-minded. I know some of y'all can't even get this. All right? But the, the Europeans weren't ignorant for calling everyone that looked like us a Moor. They inherited knowledge on how to conduct civilization from the Moors. They found pyramids all over the globe technically anyone building pyramids had knowledge from the ancient mystery schools anyone so it doesn't matter if you're talking about there's a place here well there's actually like over a thousand miles here in ohio where i'm at there's a place called pyramidsville or pyramidsburg right here in ohio it's got this huge what they would call a mound it's a pyramid there's mounds all over the united states all up and down the mississippi there's mounds well, of course in mexico a lot of you know about that chichen itza and all that stuff right there's mounds in Brazil. There's mounds all over the Americas, right? These are pyramids. So I'm going to say that again. Um, basically, anybody who had the knowledge and wisdom to build pyramids, these are people who had knowledge from the ancient mystery schools. Masonry is a watered-down version of the mystery school that's purely symbolic, right? Masonry is a way to try to raise people up to try to qualify them to be like, okay, can you handle some of what I'm about to give you? Because I can't give you all of it. I give you all of it, you're going to fall, you're going to blow your head up or something. I'll give you some of it, but before I do that, I need to raise you up a little bit. 
The masonry was purely symbolic, and it was to get people ready for the mystery school. The picture, um, this is this picture. I'm gonna try to get it on here. Try to blow it up for you. Uh, okay, there's a picture. No, can you see it? It's a pyramid, right? It's a stone. I don't know how big it is, like either this big, maybe bigger, but it's solid stone. And it it's um, black and it glows under a black light, right? And so it's a picture of a pyramid and it's got the bricks on it going up to the top where the eye of, uh, the eye of Horus is, right? Same image from the dollar. So it's not a smooth pyramid, it's a pyramid with the bricks, just like the Shimadala, which is what the pyramids look like in Egypt after they've been stripped down. They used to be smooth and have, well not smooth, they had hieroglyphics and stuff like that. But like, it's a brick pyramid with the eye of Horus at the top, which is the same thing you see on the dollar, right? And this was found in South America, like I think it was found in Peru. But this was found in South America, right here in the Americas. It looks just like the one on the dollar and this stuff was not done by accident. Uh, this is the so-called pyramid with the shining eye. Even Jim used it for his new bestseller. So it means it is a very, very famous, but also very, very old symbol. And this is the only existing really pyramid with the eye. It has exactly 13 steps like the pyramid on the one US dollar. When our ancient civilizations fell, we set up the mystery schools to make sure that all our old information didn't completely disappear. Because we were going into a cocoon state. When I say we, I'm referring to the Moors, I'm referring to the ancient people, okay, who created all of this, right? We went into cocoon stasis for thousands of years. We went to sleep, man. That's why we're in the condition that we're in right now. Europeans were basically the youngest on the planet. They're the newest to arrive on the planet. So the older you are, the faster you were going into sleep, you know, so you got like the black people, the Moors, you got like Asians, you have white people, okay? And like basically they were the last ones to come to the planet. And so they were the ones who would be fit to hold the knowledge down so that when we came back out of our sleep, when you wake up, stay woke, you wouldn't have to start over from square one, okay? So that's what that was about, because y'all can be like, why they helping me? And all this stuff and you know that's like i said that's some book so like the, the bigger picture is that we we're going into sleep man and we had to keep the knowledge here man who the start over when you look at the movies like europeans know that their time is up they're making all these armageddon movies everybody talking about armageddon armageddon and end times is so popular because they all feel it it's in their bones if you're one of them they feel it feel like it's the end so they got the, the living dead you know the zombies planet of the apes and all this shit going to end and people having to start over, no technology, no nothing. Who else wants to live like that? You know? So that's why, okay, we're going to sleep. We're going to make sure this stuff is still here. We ain't going to let it off. You know? We're not starting all the way over. This is good enough. You can start from right here and take it to the next level. All they used to tell you when a child having flying cars, clean energy and, you know, stuff like that. We can do that. You know? They're not going to do it. They're just not. We know that. We're going to do it. If you on that bush, come up with help them stay in You ain't going to do it. You, but we going to do it. If you're enlightened, if you can get this information, if this makes sense to you, you're going to do it. We're going to do it. All right, that was our job. To take it and take it to the next level where it's supposed to be at. So like I said, the mystery school is set up. Make sure the information didn't leave the planet, didn't disappear when we go to sleep. Europeans were the stewards of the knowledge for the most part. The Moors were the last civilization to carry on the traditions of the mystery schools, okay? Believe it or not, the Moors had satellite civilizations set up all across the globe. Before the Europeans came, they actually traveled the Atlantic. The great white man didn't bring us here for the first time. We actually traveled all over the planet freely to do this whenever we felt like it, right? And it's not about Islam, just like it has nothing to do with uh it, or it's not just about morocco the the nation state of morocco or granada spain and another thing about morocco um i don't know if this is true or not i'm gonna have to research it but morocco indiana was uh founded i saw online like i said i got a research that was founded like in 1850 something 
something like that. The state of Morocco wasn't founded until like a hundred years later, a hundred something years. Morocco, Indiana, technically Morocco was over here first. And also, I know this is true, Noble Drew Ali unleashed the flag for Moorish Americans with the red flag, the green five-pointed star. He unveiled that like 50 years, maybe 75 years or so before Morocco took up that flag. So we actually had it here first, okay? But you know, maybe too much for some of y'all. But like, basically, Europeans encountered the remnants of a pyramid building society. And whenever they saw that, they called them more. So they came here, hey, we was already going to sleep. We weren't up on it like that anymore. But still, we were the ones who built Cahokia and all these other places. We were the ones who built it. So they called the Indians Moors when they saw them. Because this is a pyramid building society, right? And it's not just from their perspective, okay? It's because the Moors were the last holders of the mystery schools. We were the last civilization that actively held the ancient knowledge and was able to travel the globe freely, right? So the Moors was the last civilization to have mystery schools, to keep the knowledge alive, and to be able to qualify people to pass on the torch. You know, the torch bearer, we're the last torch bearers. Okay, so that's what the Moors are. All right, so anytime you see pyramids, these are the Moors. Anytime you see that square, you know, the whole masonry thing, being able to do this stuff and to build these things and build things in alignment with the stars and things that we still don't have the technology to do now, these were Moors because they set up the ancient mystery schools all over the planet, not just in Egypt. That's why I showed you that pyramid with the stone that, that had the eye of Horus at the top. It was found in South America. This is the Moors, man. Okay? You were in the process of going to sleep or dumbing down. That's why pretty much everywhere you go and see people like us, yeah, we, these people being dominated and ruled over, taken advantage of, you know? You go to South Africa where it's 90% black and they're worse than us, so-called black Americans, you know? They dominate, I mean, they're, they're the majority, the vast majority, and they're being ruled over. It's even worse than what we got here, okay? How come they ain't running shit? Because we fell, we fell. And so, um, basically, we lost the ancient knowledge. We set up the mystery school to keep it here on the planet. So when we come back up, we can just grab the torch and run with it. Everything goes right back to the original, including the custodians of it right now, the Europeans. Everything goes back to the original when we're ready, when we're truly ready and awake. We can take our place at the head of everything, okay? So um, about that pyramid stone though, man, what is the eye of Horus, the Egyptian eye of Horus doing in South America? You know, it's found in the Americas. Why is it in South America? That makes no sense from what we traditionally thought. It makes no sense if you're on that book talking about the Moors and slaving people and all. It makes no sense to you, you know? The Egyptian stuff can't be over here. It was over here because the Moors are here. They set up the mystery schools. Pyramid building civilizations had to have ancient knowledge. Mystery schools are anywhere the ancient knowledge is, okay? It doesn't matter if we had you like, say you're living in a jungle and you've fallen so far that you're like eating aardvarks and like that. There's people who live like that in the world. And like, they may have some ancient practices. They may do things like the shamans. They may be able to um, use their mind to do things. Or they're using some of the herbs, psychedelics and stuff to do things. It's like they have some ancient knowledge, but they can't build a pyramid. They can't do these things because they've fallen. So the people who could do that sh had the ancient mystery school, you have to. And that's the connection. That's why you have Egyptian stuff over here. Because it ain't about Egypt. They're not downgrading Egypt. You know, and that's why I'm not claiming Egypt. You know, if I'm claiming it, it's because I'm a Moor. If you're not a Moor, you can't claim that. So there's Moors in Egypt who are like me and darker, who are the people who are the descendants of the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Commissions. Okay, we can't claim that. But if we're Moors, it's all connected. That's the connection. Okay, so I just wanted to share that because it's way bigger than slavery and some of the stupid asinine things that people say to try to combat the whole Moors. There's this whole thing that African Americans ain't African. It's cool because they're letting people know that the indigenous copper color people are obviously us. It should be obvious, right? How do we not know? 
My granddad's been telling me forever. He told me all the time that his father was a Blackfoot Indian, right? And I know the Blackfoot Indians is just a generalized term for anybody who was black and who had some kind of recollection of being a Native American. You Blackfoot, you Blackfoot. Had nothing to do with the Blackfoot nation in uh, Canada who don't look like us, okay? So that's why you have so many black people who say they're black people. And there's so many other black people I've been on who said the same about grandmas and grandpas being Native Americans, okay? And we discounted that. Some of us are even stupid enough to try to be like, you from Africa. I never told my granddad that. But some of us did, because it made sense, because that's what you've been taught. You know, and the people who are doing this, like the African Americans ain't African, you know, they're still on that stupid because they're pushing the whole slavery thing. The morals of slavery and just all the dumb you got to say, you're overlooking the big picture. I know there's not concrete proof of all that stuff, but what I'm saying about the pyramids being everywhere in the ancient mystery schools, this is true. And if you actually know how tribal systems work and how information gets passed down, you know that that's true. The ancient mystery schools are set up all over the world, and this is how you can have pyramids in Antarctica and everywhere else, okay? And this is how the information was kept even after Lemuria, El Mu, and Atlantis fell. This is how the information was kept up. And that might sound, I didn't even want to say that to the end because Atlantis and y'all think they're fake, but it was real. Atlantis, Lemuria, last big time, you know, advanced civilizations, they fell. The knowledge went into the mystery schools so that when we dumbed down, it didn't disappear. And you, they didn't help the Europeans. They didn't help the Europeans, you idiot. They had to give the knowledge to the last one who would be awake while we were asleep. If they're the only that's gonna be awake, what are you scared of them? I'm gonna take this over, they can't do nothing about it. What you scared of, man? Do you understand what I'm saying? Does that make sense? It's like, dude, the Moors weren't helping the Europeans, the Moors weren't stuck in Morocco, the Moors weren't stuck in Spain, whatever the guys think. The Moors were all over the world, that's why there's mystery schools. The Moors passed the knowledge on to the people who would be awake while we were asleep. And now we're waking up. And so people who can't handle that, it's just like trying to give the information to an ape or a knuckle dragger. If anybody's so stupid, they can't handle this information, they can't handle it. You know what I'm saying? Because this is for the enlightened, you know? And it's bigger than that. It's bigger than slavery and the Moors and us and all that stupid shit. You are not enlightened. You can't look outside the box. You can't think of things that aren't written down in history books. Thinking about the mystery schools in Atlantis and the Lemuria, that's too much for you because you can only accept what you've been taught in schools, you know? And so that's why I bring that up. This is for the enlightened. I want the enlightened out there to get the message, to make this go viral. You have to share this because I'm saying it in a way that people can understand. You have to share this. You have to share the website, moresinamerica.com because the information on there can be heard and understood by several people. I mean, people who haven't even been exposed to this at all. People in my family, people all over the place are getting it. That's why the website gets so much traffic and so much love. They're understanding it. It just makes sense. It's like, damn, family, older people been saying that we're Native Americans, and now here's the connection. Boom, it makes sense. Now, there's this whole discord in there with dumb, disagreeable Negroes who want to go to the moors and blah, blah, blah. And that's why I keep attacking that stupid shit because it's bullshit. Y'all need to wake up. You ain't woke. You know, you, you're not enlightened, man. You know, if you can't get enlightened, I guess it just ain't in you. You know, but you need to wake up, man. It's bigger than that. And it is what I'm saying it is because the proof is all over the world, okay? And if this makes sense to you, the proof is in you. You're waking up. And that's why the website and the YouTube and the Facebook, anything else that I had that's under them got attacked. They can't take down the website because that's mine. I own it. But the Facebook and YouTube, anything else that I was shared on, that can be attacked. You know, people literally, I've even got screenshots of this stuff. Go to moresinamerica.com, look at this stuff about the fake outrage and all this. There's screenshots showing these fools who look like they're from Germany. And I'm not, once again, I'm not knocking Germany. Much love to the Europeans. I don't care, I ain't hating, I'm just being real. What's wrong with speaking it real and being truthful? I'm not over there being scared and talking about what the Germans are doing, but who look like that are scared about me just sharing information. They're scared. They're scared of black people are white black people. They're scared the Moors are waking up. They're scared the Moors know that they're the copper-colored indigenous people. They're scared. They don't even want us talking about it. They don't want us knowing. Because it's obvious. Because you put two and two together, and there's no argument about it. If we know, everything else is moot. 
You know, there's people who knew and who never forgot. You got the Mardi Gras Indians in New Orleans. They've been knowing who they are. They're still here. They're still doing their thing. They might want to make it look like, well, these were escaped slaves who took on the Indian heritage. But nah, it's not. It's bigger than that. The whole Caribbean thing. Beautiful wife over here. Both sides of the family been doing this stuff. Puerto Rican and Haitians. They've been celebrating, doing carnival. Everyone does carnival all throughout the Caribbean and South Central America, right? Where's the traditional Indian regalia, right? They've been keeping it alive. They're not, I mean, you did have some people who came from Africa through slavery and mixed in, but no, we was already here. The Tainos, a lot of Tainos, black, you know? Look like regular African-Americans, you know? And they're Puerto Rican or they're Dominican or, you know? Were they in Jamaica too? So wherever that. You got them, I'm just saying, you got them, you look it up, you look on my website, you look, can look online. So they never forgot who they are, you know? And of course, they're going, some white dudes, the experts gonna come and be like, well, you're a Native American, you're really from Africa, you came over here and mixed with that, and now you're just pretending to be an Indian. That's what they want you to believe, man, you know? But it's bigger than that. And so that's all I wanted to really share. You know, I don't like seeing this dumbed down, and I'm, it's so stupid to see this anti more agenda, because you got these people with the African American, ain't African, and a bunch of people is obviously into that, and they're just regurg regurgitating this, this anti more shit. Don't regurgitate that bull, it's dead. It's dead. It doesn't matter. It's enlightened. It's bigger than that. So yes, we're more. Because I just said all this stuff, and it makes perfect sense to anyone who's enlightened. And that's why we are who we are. Much respect. That's what time it is, for real. The strange thing with this one and other artifacts found in Ecuador, that if you put black light on it, the eye shines really very, very strong. And the natural color is kind of light green and gray. And the most impressive for me was that on the bottom of the pyramid, you have here in gold inlays, the Orion constellation, and an unknown writing. This unknown writing we found on stones all over the world. In Ecuador, in Colombia, in Illinois, in Glossel, France, in Calabria, Italy, in Turkmenistan, in Malta, and Rex Gilroy, Gilroy has some pictures on his uh, website and I found out that some of the stones he shows with unknown writing presents the same writing. That means there must have existed a global civilization long, long time ago. And there was only one man able to translate this language, Professor Kurt Schildmann. He was the president of the German Linguistic Association. He spoke and wrote more than 40 languages perfect. And he could translate this writing, and he called it pre-Sanskrit, because it's older than the oldest writing. And the translation of these four letters on the bottom of the pyramid was, the son of the creator comes. And when uh, an American professor with his Tuareg friend from Northern Africa, Tuareg, was watching this picture on uh, Project Camelot interview, he was contacting me and he was informing me that his Tuareg friend was shocked when he saw this writing because it, he said it looks like our former, former writing and one sentence he could translate that was sun. And the Tuaregs are uh, on the research of Professor Marcelo May, he was a famous French archaeologist, and he was writing a book, and he was writing that the Tuaregs, on his research, had a connection to the sunken continent Atlantis. And even if you read the Bible, there is the sentence, until the, the building of the Tower of Babel, the whole human spoke one language. And we found definitely stones with the same writing all over the world on different continents. And for example, the stones from Glossel, France, they were found already in 1924. So who could have been able 
to make stones before 1924 and bring, him from, bring them from South America to North America, even to Australia, in the hope that one day archaeologists find it and they break their brain, what could it be?